8.55 Eastern Daylight Time, and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. The first great air raid on Paris, which took place today, evidently had two objectives. The only one the Germans admit was the airfields in the suburbs, particularly at Issy on the southwestern edge of town and the nearby air ministry. This building appears to have been hit, though the censorship forbids the direct admission, but not seriously damaged. One bomb narrowly missed the American ambassador bullet who was lunching with the minister. More than 900 of the 1,000 bombs dropped fell in the suburbs, but one flight of planes was evidently aiming at the government buildings on the Seine in the center of Paris. It missed them, but damaged many apartment houses and started at least one fire on the riverfront. Many of the bombs were either incendiary or of the delayed explosion type, and 61 fires were started, most of which were soon under control. But it is probable that the casualty list will run much higher than the 50 killed and 150 wounded so far officially announced. Five schools and a hospital were among the buildings hit. About 150 planes in six waves took part in the raid, and considering that anti-aircraft fire kept them five or six miles up, their marksmanship seems to have been pretty good. Seventeen of them were shot down. The French report that most of the German troops in Flanders are being transferred to the front east of Paris, along the Oise and Aisne rivers and the Argonne Forest, apparently in preparation for a new offensive. But enough of them have been left around Dunkirk to keep up a hard fight with the Allied forces there, which are still being withdrawn, once more aided by fog. The British Admiralty issued a report on the evacuation operation, which admitted the loss of six destroyers and 24 other vessels, all small, including a number of trawlers and several river excursion boats. Many of these were doubtless mistaken by the German flyers who sank them for larger vessels which might account for a good deal of the discrepancy between the British and German reports on the shipping losses. The Admiralty said that the number of troops brought back would surprise the world, but it has not yet given the number, perhaps because the operations are not complete. Meanwhile, the Germans claim that since the 10th of May, they have taken nearly a million and a quarter prisoners, 400,000 Dutch, 500,000 Belgians, 330,000 British and French. Since practically all the Dutch army and most of the Belgian army eventually surrendered, and most of the British and French wounded had to be left behind, this figure does not appear impossible. But it is hard to believe the statement of some other German sources, which is not an official claim, that their own casualties in more than three weeks of terrific fighting were only 50,000, just about the number they say they lost in Poland. Credulity is still further strained by the statements officially made by the German government today to the American Chargé d'Affaires in Berlin. One of them accuses the British and French Secret Service of plots to blow up not only the liner President Roosevelt, now bringing Americans back from the British Isles, but the liner Manhattan coming back from Genoa and the Washington, which is on its way to Bordeaux to take off refugees. The German story says that the Allies plan to sink these ships and then blame the Germans so as to excite America to get into the war. And it was added that, I quote, Germany expects the United States government to take all necessary steps to prevent such a crime as the British plan to commit, end quote. Any alarm that may be felt for these ships and their passengers should be moderated by the recollection that the Germans told a similar story about another American liner last fall, but nothing ever happened to it. And perhaps some of the American warships now in European waters may be used to convoy some of these vessels. And still another official communication <clears throat> from the German government to the governments of the United States, Mexico, and Panama insisted that the British Secret Service has sent large numbers of agents to Mexico and Central America to try to sabotage the canal and to stir up trouble in Mexico, for which, of course, the Germans will again be blamed so that American feeling will be aroused. This, too, is reminiscent of the stories told by the Germans about activities of British secret agents in other countries of Europe. Meanwhile, reports from Mexico indicate that if the British have any agents there, they must be pretty well disguised, for the persons who are making the trouble look to most people like Germans. As for Italy, it's the same old story, apparently a little nearer to war every day, but not yet in it. Mussolini convokes his council of ministers tomorrow, but it does not seem to be expected in Rome that war will come immediately. Although Foreign Minister Count Ciano is expected to report to the meeting on recent diplomatic exchanges with the United States and the reasons why President Roosevelt's endeavors to keep Italy at peace have got nowhere. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.